Now let's move on to the, uh, well, this is another case of going woke and going broke, Darren. The Body Shop, the British cosmetic company, it's been plunged into administration and its stores in the UK are at risk of closing. Tell us a bit more about that. Yeah, so I don't know what viewers may well be aware because I remember doing it on Sky News Australia at the time, Rita, but the, the body shop attacked J.K. Rowling, right? They told her that actually she should mm. read some book by some trans activist and enjoy one of their vegan bath bombs to actually relax as she reads this book and educates herself, those watchwords of the moment. Oh. But clearly these clowns, Rita, have, have focused on wackery and wokery over sales and customer service. And actually, I think J.K. Rowling uh, will continue to have the last laugh, not just on the body shop, but every other woke organization that has attacked her for standing up for women's rights and actually single sex spaces and the sanctity of those those spaces themselves. I actually think this goes to show that the, the commercial curse of being woke a woke joke. It struck again. You know, we saw this with Bud. We saw it with the Bud Light, Rita. We saw this with so many mm. other of woke corporates oh, that yes. are focused on the priorities, and it comes back to royally bite them on the behind. Oh, you're so right. And you know what? They used to be uh, a little bit in the activist space years ago, but. It related to their products. So their big thing was we don't test on animals and they're a cosmetic company. So you're like, okay, if I care about that, that is a big plus. And I think that was great. But then they're starting to uh, go after JK Rowling and lecture women about uh, uh, accepting male bodies into female spaces and getting into all sorts of really divisive, ugly, fringe issues that have got nothing to do with the cosmetic industries and look where they are now. Now, to an issue that uh, impacts everybody in the UK, UK businesses are suffering from power price pain and that means that their prices are going to go up. Four out of five say that high energy bills will force them to raise prices for customers over the next two years. And we've already got, Darren, UK families struggling to pay their bills. Around 6 million households are in uh, what's called uh, energy poverty. Uh, all self-inflicted pain, Darren. Exactly. Yeah, it is. This is the madness of following net zero, the net zero orthodoxy of being more Greta than Glasgow, you know, this is the insanity of it. We've got sky high inflation and then the economists are saying to us, Rita, well, this is exactly the, the problem of, of approaching these so-called re reliable renewables, which are anything but. You know, I could stand outside and hope that the wind is going to blow so I can power my home, Rita. But, you know, you can't yeah. guarantee, you can't power a gas boiler with that. You know, you can't heat your home. We had elderly people in this country over recent years who have literally died from pneumonia because they are too cold to put the heating on in a country that, guess what, gets really rather cold. It, we've just seen British Steel close its doors in Wales, where Welsh working class families are saying, we don't know what we're going to do. And that's because energy is so prohibitively expensive. And these energy intensive industries, mm. which are national mm. key security battlegrounds that we're going to need in an increasingly volatile world, where actually they're saying we can't afford to operate in Britain anymore. And then you compare us with other European nations France hasn't pursued this net zero dogma as insanely as we have. They actually went hell for the leather on nuclear energy. We shunned that. Our politicians said no to that. We need wind. We need solar. Well, Britain is a country that the sun doesn't shine in very often. And when the wind blows, well, as I say, you can't heat a home or power a gas boiler with that stuff. We're going to need oil and gas for many, many years to come. This is the utter insanity of this pursuit. As I say, it's placing Greta and activist politics above the British people. And that's where the government has gone totally wrong. And it makes me utterly mad, Rita.
Darren, you are so right. Uh, it is weakening the country. It is self-inflicted harm. And sadly, the British public have no choice because Labor is even more hell-bent on net zero than the Tories who've uh, inflicted this pain on the country.